know what? Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah! Like nothing ever happens. Like nothing ever happens. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I hope you're all doing great here on this wonderful Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Wolf Den Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast, everybody. I hope you're doing the well. only podcast on the Wolf Den. True. the The only secret podcast that has been that has been yeah. talked about for for ages and is is sang from the yep. rooftops when it is every single week. And here we are, guys. I hope you're doing good. Um, gonna be real with you. Gonna be honest. Not much to talk about. <laughs> No, uh, I basically scrambled to put all these articles in the keep or the ones I added anyway, because there's just not a whole lot, not a lot of interesting stuff. No, uh, and, and the top story happened but, last week while we were doing the podcast and we didn't think it was no, a big it, deal. No, it happened. The top story happened like right when you posted your video on the switch anniversary oh on wednesday i forgot we don't do this yeah. on wednesdays anymore <laughs> yeah uh yes it happened the day after um oh yeah and i tweeted about it i forgot yeah um yeah so but even that like it's a repeat of news we've heard before but this is for real this time you guys for real this time it's it's a bloomberg yeah. i mean we could just get into it but first uh thank yeah. you john man dude for the prime subscription of six months i appreciate you uh yeah let's just freaking get into it well we got yeah, bloomberg right. who's a big deal they are big news people yeah they're a real news outlet yeah they, they handle really real news. they really want me to uh give them what 50 cents a week what is this shit I don't know. I don't understand. It's 2021, <laughs> and I don't understand how newspaper websites haven't grasped the idea of, you know, ad-based revenue. Yeah, I don't. Like they all, it's all like subscription-based. <laughs> yeah, I don't get why that. I I don't understand. They they have and if they're like in the past, dude. These people need to learn. And it's. Usually because sometimes like you get five articles free a month sometimes it's one sometimes it's unlimited it's whatever they decide because they don't know how the internet works journalism it's important i guess <laughs> can i get rid of this go away uh free access oh it opened up a thing get out of here i'm just gonna you know what i'll do Ooh, there you go no one can see it now all right uh so bloomberg reported one week ago this is from uh, Taka Takashi Mochizuki, who is a uh, he's a he's a he's an industry guy. He t tweets a lot about yeah. uh, specifically Nintendo, but um, reports on a lot of Japanese uh, video game business stuff. Um, and he did this for Bloomberg. Nintendo plans switch model with bigger Samsung OLED display. Oh, I should I should know this. Takahashi Mochizuki and Sohu Sohi Kim. It's two people. But I only recognize yeah. the first one. So this is on the anniversary of the Switch uh, last week. Uh, would you like to do the honors, Will? Sure. Nintendo Co. plans to unveil a new model of its Switch gaming console equipped with a bigger Samsung OLED display this year, hoping the larger touchscreen can prop up demand in time for the holidays, people familiar with the plan said. Samsung Display Co. will start mass production of the 7-inch 720p resolution OLED panels as early as June with an initial with an initial monthly target of just under a million units, said the people, who asked not to be identified discussing internal matters. The displays are slated for shipment to assemblers around July, people said. Representatives for Nintendo and Samsung Display declined to comment. Nintendo seeks to sustain a Switch lineup that continues to sell well against Xbox and PlayStation thanks to pandemic era breakout pandemic era breakout hits like Animal Crossing and a chip crunch that's plagued supplies of rival consoles. Uh, but the gadget is now into its fifth year while Microsoft and Sony both have new and more powerful machines in the market. 
the gaming community has speculated online about the introduction of an OLED or organic light emitting diode screen, but Nintendo has stayed mum and President uh, Shintoru Furukawa said in, Je- in February his company has no plans to announce a new Switch anytime soon. Samsung's involvement involvement is the strongest indication that Nintendo is serious about updating the console and on a large scale. Shares of the Kyoto-based game maker fell 3.6% in Tokyo on Thursday amid the wider market sell-off. Uh, what Bloomberg Intelligence says, the release of a more premium version of the Switch console with an OLED display and support for 4K graphics for the holiday 2021 selling season could drive the company's sales above consensus for the fiscal year ending March 2022 and extend the life cycle of the Switch platform for many years. Uh, I could have sworn that there was a rumor right before this one that said that the screen was going to be 1080p. I could have sworn that I saw that somewhere. I, I think, well, I think the rumor always, according to this, uh, it's 720p. And I think a lot Correct. of people are upset that it's not higher. But that's, I feel like that's a non issue because a 720p screen in handheld mode is fine so so hold it here it doesn't really matter i've been one of those people talking about how uh it would be nice to get a 1080p screen but i'm also not upset about uh it being 720 or us having a 720p screen right now yeah like i think the screen on the switch is freaking fine as it is i really just want the screen to make it all the way to the bevel like just just really yeah. all i want i just want the screen to go to the edges that's it yeah those bezels really do kill the whole thing yeah it looks like a freaking uh, gen 1 ipad you know yeah uh it's like so like why why do we have that in 2021 why we got bezels like that um yeah but uh yeah i could have sworn there was a r- previous previous rumor that said 1080p <sighs> so so th- th- this is one of the things with uh with these rumors, I, I think I talked. Mm-hmm. I talked about this, but it must have been on my, uh, on one of my live streams. Um, they always announce these rumors for for Switch stuff. They, they or they they, they sh- or Nintendo products at all. They always they 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 go. Oh, Nintendo's buying up all these Samsung OLEDs. Oh, Nintendo's yeah. uh, got the Tegra One chip. That means if they have the Tegra One chip. They're going to be able to do 1080p in handheld, and they're going to be able to... uh, It's got USB-C, so that means they're going to be able to have the dock be really powerful and control a lot of the graphics. And then the freaking thing comes out and doesn't do any of that shit because Nintendo purposely, like, underpowers their stuff. They, 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 They purposely, like... They want everything to work great. They don't want there to be any sort of... It's it's like the Apple of video games. They, they, they want yeah. it to be really good and they purposely like limit the functionality of everything. Yeah. Uh, the difference being that, you know, Apple usually tries to go for like the highest end uh, chips and stuff. Nintendo always goes like a generation or two behind, but they right. optimize it to, to its fullest. That's probably why, you know, the screen on the Switch has such a huge bezel and it's only 720p. Also, Nintendo has terrible UI. So maybe yes. Apple was a bad analogy. <laughs> maybe that was a bad analogy, but you got my idea. They 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 try to yeah. uh they, they wanna they're not at the cutting edge ever. That they're, they're yeah. they, they they so so going by the rumors of what tech they're using isn't a good indicator of what type of specs uh their devices are going to be capable of. Yeah. Um Anyway, that being said, 720p, I think that's a, I mean, uh, yeah, if, if, this, if you can only go up from there, the freaking thing's already 720p. The only yeah. difference is it's going to be OLED, um, uh, which is cool. And t- Yeah, and the article continues, an, an OLED panel will consume less battery, offer higher contrast, and possibly a faster response time when compared to the Switch's current liquid crystal display said Yoshiro Tomura, co-founder of display consultancy DSCC. Uh, Nintendo decided Nintendo decided to go with rigid OLED panels for the new model, the people said, a cheaper but less flexible alternative to the type commonly found in high-end smartphones. The latest model will also come with 4K ultra high definition graphics when paired with the TV. Um, that could intensify a long-standing complaint of developers 
who have struggled with the difference in resolution between handheld and TV modes and now face a bigger gap between the two. See, I don't know that that's the part I don't buy. I've been saying yeah. forever that this thing's not going to be freaking 4K or it's not going to be 4K in the way that everybody wants it to be. Like yeah. It's going to be weird upscaled 4K. Um, yeah, I think it's the the most believable rumor I've seen is NVIDIA has like a 4K upscaling AI. Yeah, DS. That it uses for its... DSLL or something. Yeah, that it uses for its uh, shield uh, system. So if anything, it'll be that. It's not going to be true 4K. Yeah, that's that's where I would put my money. I mean, yeah, they're saying when docked it would reach 4K. Um, is the dock going to have any sort of power behind it? Like, is is it going to have a friggin' chipset in it? Like, this dock has nothing inside of it. Yeah, the do- the chipset in the dock is about like this big, <laughs> if anything. Yeah, no, it so, is exactly that big. Yeah. So it'll have to be substantially bigger because the dock is like 90% plastic. I'm see, I'm I'm thinking this is what I was talking about. This 4K situation that they're talking. This is the thing where it's like the thing will be capable of 4K if Microsoft is making it, (laughs) but but Microsoft's not making it. Nintendo's making it. So Nintendo is going to be like, it's capable of 4K, but we're just going to give you a steady 1080 60 because the freaking switch can't even handle that on most games right now yeah so like you know one step at a time here like like this like freaking uh xbox one uh xbox series x and playstation 5 are just now getting 4k 60 games like freaking the switch is still getting 1080p 60 worked out you know that's what that's so i the the 4k in docked mode that one's i'm very skeptical yeah. of that and if we do get that it's going to be like you said the weird ai upscaling yeah i talk about it all the time and i don't know what the acronym is uh, D- someone D- just put, put it in the chat it's d s l l d l s s something like that yeah that's NVIDIA's oh, own like algorithm. DLSS. Yeah. There it is. DLSS, yeah. And he said I, I just Medicension says DLSS is pretty impressive though. Um Yeah, I mean if it's good, it's good. So, but... so I, I haven't looked too hard into specifically DLSS. Um, but if it's anything like the Marseille connector, that thing's impressive. That thing's great. Yeah. Like if they just put one of those in the dock, that'd be sick. Um, yeah, but it I'm, doesn't I'm, mean that you're going to be seeing Call of Duty on the Switch. Like right. when people hear 4K Switch, they think, okay, cool, I'm going to get my freaking Call of Duty and all these big games are going to be easier to yeah, port. And they're, they're just Cyberpunk. not. You're going to get Cyberpunk at launch. You're going to get, you know, any, anything else like that. But all it means is that, you know, it'll take up the entire resolution and the games will look better than if they were 1080p upscaled to 4K through the TV itself. It'll look better for sure, and it's great, and I'd rather have that than nothing, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just that, you know, the uh, people really want a high-powered Switch to get the high-powered games, and yeah. you're not going to get that with AI, AI yeah. upscaling. You're going to get... Uh, you're going to get the same type of games that we've been getting, which is fine by mm-hmm. me. I've been yeah. having a great time with the library on the Switch. I just play all the other crap on my other consoles. What is there anything else on here? Uh, the new display mirrors the current Switch and Switch Lite, but is an upgrade from the Switch's 6.2 inch and Switch Lite's 5.5 inch size. If the console's housing remains unchanged, the new Switch will likely support a thinner bezel. Okay, so we're getting a bigger screen. Uh, so, and that, so, that sounds like that's all that's happening. It's so yeah, well, bigger OLED screen. Yeah. I'd imagine there needs to be a processor that's different too yeah especially if it's going to do a 4k output of any kind this is sounding more and more like uh less like switch pro and more like the new nintendo switch that's what this is sounding like uh what do i win when it when it comes out and it's called the new nintendo switch and it plays all the same games what do i win yeah well i imagine any any successor to the switch whether it's 
the Switch 2 or the new Nintendo Switch or the Switch Pro or the Super Switch or whatever, any successor to it would have to be some sort of backwards compatible because that's the way Nintendo's hand Nintendo's handhelds usually go, but that's the way the industry is trending as a whole. And for Nintendo to not follow that trend is just asinine on their part. But I'm not even saying it's going to be... I mean, yeah, I, I think it'll absolutely be backwards compatible, but I'm not saying... I'm not even saying that. I'm saying you're not going to see new games on the new Nintendo Switch. You're going to see the same right. games that'll play on the older hardware too. They're just right, right. not going to be on an OLED screen, you know? Right. OLED's great. Yeah. It does, that gives you better battery life, right? Yes. Oh, so then you don't even need... So then it won't even need a better processor. It would I be mean, fine as it is. You I just feel do like that. It, but if it's going to do any sort of 4K output, it it would. Then they would need to have an upgraded dock. That Because how else right. would they do 4K output no, at all? If... Unless this they whole put a chip sounds... in it that is only for DLSS, but I don't see that happening either. This whole thing sounds like it's going to be an upgraded version of the Switch. Either the Switch Pro, the new Nintendo Switch, mm-hmm. the the Switch X, whatever they wind up calling it. It looks like it's gonna it's gonna be the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 Pro of the Nintendo Switch. You know, it's gonna be an incremental upgrade. Right, Dad is calling us right now. It's going to be <laughs> a re- re- it's going to be a redesign. You want to answer it? I'll vamp for a little bit. Uh, yeah. Let me take this. Mute yourself. Hold on. Oh, you hung up. I missed it. Never mind. You don't want to call him back. He's probably asking you where the keys are. To be honest. True. All right. Let me do that. I'll be right back. Mute yourself. Does he know how to do that? He doesn't know how to do that. Oh, he just leaves. Okay, cool, dude. <laughs> um, the Switch XL is going to be uh, sporting a revision of the Tegra X1 codenamed Mariko with faster clock speeds known officially as Tegra X1 Plus was released in 2019. It says who? I need a source, Edward. Can't just say stuff like that. <laughs> just got my switch in november says bbq chicken uh so i probably won't upgrade but i am curious maybe four to five years in the future if nintendo makes a new brand a brand new console or not you don't need to upgrade if you just got a switch it's it's gonna be fine like i don't know why it's so hard to equate this to uh the way the ds was and the and the 3ds was or the ps4 pro and the ps4 regular it sounds like it's the same thing Oh, shit. I Kevin hit, Kens is in the chat. He heard Switch Pro oh, and he no. wanted to see what's up. I hit uh, disconnect instead of mute mic. Uh, he just wanted to know what to do if Uber cancels on you. <laughs> that's how. That's how. That's how lonely he is right now. Yeah, he has I no told, had, had a dinner. He 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 got sh- no. It's Uber pick like the taxi service. Oh, oh he's screwed. Yeah. He he has a cab coming, but he got charged a nine dollar cancellation fee, even though Uber canceled on him. So I told him he's got to just go on the app and try to fight it because that's ha- that happened to me at E three. <laughs> I've had that happen. Yes, mm-hmm. it sucks. Yeah. Um. Metastension. I plan to upgrade just to play a nicer looking Warframe, since they seemingly won't implement cross save with ps5 i don't know what the deal like they have great um they had a great well i before was it before fortnite warframe had a good thing where like you could just pull your your save from playstation or something Mm -hmm. or from pc or something but uh i don't think it was like free flowing i think you can only do it once um I'm glad we got cross save mostly figured out for a lot of games. The Switch can handle Fortnite. It's the developers that don't really care about it. it says Yaro. Um, yeah, I've, it's it's mostly a developer problem if they can't get their game working properly on the Switch. I mean, Nintendo should be able to help them, but it is it is a developer problem. But it's also a lot of work for a lot of developers. 
So like yeah. I understand why they wouldn't uh either waste the money or have the time and the money uh to do that. Like like imagine mm -hmm. Cyberpunk trying to put out a Switch version. Through yeah. all the problems that they had with their development, imagine they had a little yeah. section where they were like, well, we got to make it work on the Switch. It would just make things way worse for them. Yeah. And other developers have to deal with that on a, on a you know, a smaller scale. Um, so I understand why certain people wouldn't want their game on the Switch. Even like yeah. Call of Duty Warzone, I can understand. The game is freaking 200 gigs. You're not going to well, shove that onto yeah. the Switch. And, the, and it already, it, even Warzone has its own problems on all the other consoles fix those and then maybe get it on yeah. the switch also too that's why like you see a lot of developers don't put it their games on the switch until well after it comes out on playstation or xbox i mean the witcher didn't come out until well after you know the console the other console launched. doom didn't even come out until well after yeah they had time to like figure it out yeah you know uh Edward Bova put some stuff in the chat before and it seemed legit, but he didn't source it or anything. So I just take his word for it. Tegra X1, codenamed Mariko. Uh, oh, this was as of June of last year. No, this is 2019. No, this is the original. No, this is... Tegra X1 Plus is different. Tegra X1 Plus is the new one. The Tegra X1 is the one that was put into the revision. Oh, and here's one from January. Rumored Switch Pro might not actually use Tegra X1 chip. X1 <laughs> Plus chip. This was of uh, January this year. Um... Now the latest rumor from unspecified sources. Okay. Uh, never heard of that website before. WCCFtech.com suggests the system will not adopt the Tegra X1 chip. It would instead make use of the new custom NVIDIA processors with the GPU supposedly based on Volta architecture. Uh... Uh, despite the change, any serious performance improvements... Uh, and other extras like 4K support are also not expected. Adding to this production is not believed to have been started yet either, meaning a release before the end of this year is, quote, unlikely at this point in time. The individual who shared this apparently has a, quote, good reputation and has previously revealed correct information about mobile phone products in the past for more details about the switch the rumored switch pro model be sure to check out our gun um so uh, once again who knows <laughs> yeah none of this is confirmed regardless i think that the uh processor that's going to be in it is going to just be like an in incremental performance based upgrade it's not going to be like a revolutionary thing yeah uh yeah so again we're getting new hardware v relatively soon probably we'll hear about it sometime this year maybe over the summer um but keep your pants on it's not going to be anything like you know to throw your switch out about it's not going to be anything crazy just going to be like a little a little incremental upgrade for you Um, did I never change the, oh no, I did the title of the stream. <laughs> uh, anyway, we got notifications here. We got, who do we got? We got S O L soul should do with the prime subscription we got mk loomis with seven months we got a wolf man with the prime subscription we got teffy aj with two months finally catching you live from australia oh good day oh, good day Mago. Uh, for a shrimp on the bobby uh yeah. i was gonna just start cursing in, in australian <laughs> that was bad but that well i mean that's what they do down there that's what they do they curse a lot and it's okay for them to do it yeah wood needs to start capitalizing on all of the great australian cuss words that they could just get away with 
Yeah. And we can't, you know? Uh, Al Webbs with two months. Thank you so much. I think Wood started a podcast and today is the first day. I think he's doing it on Tuesdays at the exact same time that we're doing it. Yo, we will crush him. <laughs> like, like, normally I would be like, yeah, he's doing his podcast right now. What a piece of garbage. Normally I would be like, uh, uh they don't, I mean, he probably doesn't know that we do the podcast. He knows. <laughs> Our, our own how, fans don't even know. We you, that's true. Our own fans don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows that this podcast yeah. exists. Joe says, thanks for the six months. Wow, six months. Yay. Yeah. Uh, why is there still no messaging system? You mean on the Switch? Because that would be a disaster. A messaging yeah. system on the Switch sounds so like a nightmare. To implement it now, especially. I mean... But there's the Nintendo Switch mobile app for iOS and Android. <laughs> yeah, everybody uses that. Yeah. How many people in the chat don't have that app at all on their phones? I have it. I think I've opened it once. <laughs> yeah, I have it. And I got a notification every once in a while. Did you know the game that you're playing could have chat in this app? While well, I'm in Discord with somebody. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of I do not in the chat. Yeah. I don't even have a Switch. <laughs> <laughs> uh Lubik Louis Bick says Married Tennis is 35% off on Married Day. Oh my god. Well, guess what? About that. Oh wait, should we talk about that or should we talk about uh how the 720p screen doesn't really matter on the Switch? Uh probably talk about that. I guess we could talk about that real quick cuz yeah, so Nintendo Light put out an article today talking about how 720p screen on the switch people are upset about it because that's not an upgrade mm -hmm. um yeah and 720p is old news 720p is tiny what do you, you come on man it's, it's 2021 what are we doing with 720p screen still well the screen is tiny as hell it's 6.2 inches uh jeff grubb made a tweet right here that said, I'm begging you, before you give your Switch Pro takes, please look at the pixel density of 720p at 7 inches. It's 209 pixels per inch, which is equivalent to a retina display if you hold it 16 inches away from your face. But yeah, that's about how, how I would play it. Yeah, this is 16 inches from my face. I have a tape measure. Oh, that is so far. That is actually pretty far. Yeah, but I mean, it's about where you would play it right maybe a little closer but still that this yeah, is not no, that far yeah no you're 16 yeah. inches is is where i'm holding it i'm holding it I had, my, inches. I had my switch i would be able to better uh, demonstrate but yeah and then he says which you almost certainly do if you're an adult and then there's a screen is this retina pixel density and viewing distance calculator for a retina world and then he just put it in to the retina calculator. It's basically a retina yeah. screen. Yeah. Um, seven inches. Is that what the rumored uh, size is going to be? Yeah. We just read a whole article about how it's going to be seven inches. I don't listen. <laughs> and then he goes on to say 1080p in handheld is a waste of power, both in terms of performance and battery, even on your phone, which probably yeah. is a higher resolution. I honestly, my phone, 720p. I got the 720p one and I was actually a little afraid to use it. Did you try to log into Twitch? Yeah, I did. Do you want? Because, like, no, not the. Uh, yeah, just text it to me. Okay. Um,. I was a little scared when I got my phone. I was like, because uh, I was going down, I think, from 1080p to 720. Um, and I went to the store to look at the three of them lined up, the three phones lined up. And I was like, oh, 720p looks exactly the same. I don't know why I was so yeah. worried about this. And I never look at my phone and go, wow, I wish I had more pixel density. Yeah, it's, not it's a thing that never crossed been... my mind. You have the 11, right? Yeah. The regular baseline 11. Yeah, so and do I. It's never a problem. The only thing is, no matter how much storage I get on my phone, I will fill it up. No matter what. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like water. 
no it's like gas it can fills whatever container that it's in yeah anyway uh even on your phone which is probably higher resolution games run at 720p because you won't notice the difference but you would notice the battery draining in 20 minutes nintendo absolutely could have bumped uh it up to 1080p to get the higher number of marketing buzz but it is absolutely the right call not to do that I will be reading and watching your reactions, and I'm going to be waiting for one of your your a holes to say some shit about 720p. One of your assholes, not what are you assholes? Uh oh, and text and UI would be even smaller at 1080p, and the contrast improvements of OLED are going to be better than a resolution bump. I I disagree with that point. Um. They could be smaller at 1080p. They don't necessarily have to be smaller. That's a design yeah. choice. Um. Anyway, and then we got Jeff Bacalar who says, please explain to me that the take that your Switch Pro needs to have a higher resolution than 720p. My friends, it is seven inches. <laughs> what are we even talking yeah. about here? This is an article from Nintendo Life, by the way. Um. So yeah, basically 720p, just fine. In the future, yeah, the, when when processing power is it's not a big deal and battery life will last a thousand years because it all runs on freaking graphite or whatever, uh, yeah, maybe we'll get seven twenty. Uh, we'll get ten eighty p. But yeah, it's really not important. Every yeah, this is this is a six point one inch screen and it's just a little bit more than seven twenty. So I'm not too plus about it. Uh. Cool Ranch Hanzo says, I disagree that it is just fine. I think 900p would be better at seven inches. No one would notice the difference if you went from 720p to nine inches. If you held seven, yeah. if you held 720p and 900p next to each other, no one at, at, at seven inches, no one is telling the difference between those two. It is very hard to tell the difference between certain resolutions unless people unless you go out of your way to make the difference very clear you in, know in my it's own like, videos like, i i i mix 1080p and 4k all the time nobody nobody yeah. knows this because most people watch the video at like 480p yeah um another phenomenon i noticed is you know i i sometimes will upload videos at 60 frames per second and so and sometimes i'll upload them at you know 24 um yeah but when I upload them at 60 frames per second, I'm still shooting me at 720p, at 720 frames a second. No, I'm still shooting me at 24 frames a second. Right. I'm just <laughs> uploading it at 60 frames per second because I have gameplay footage or something. And people complain. Yeah. People go, oh, you!" I got DMs that were like, you used to upload at 60 frames per second. What's going on here? What's the problem? Just because they see the little slider that says 60 frames. Yeah. When I upload and it's not in 60 frames, it's because there's no gameplay footage. So, this video is going to be the same no matter what. <laughs> people just... It, it's one of those things. It's pe people hear yeah. high frame rate in their head and they think it's better. They think yeah. high frame rate equals better. Yeah. Those people haven't seen The Hobbit in, in theaters. Oh, God. That, that's, that's rough. Have you ever seen the 48 france the second version of the hobbit i saw the a trailer it's yeah <laughs> yeah it looks like a freaking soap opera yeah and even like 120p games are like too fast I... like at a certain point at a certain point like refresh rate it, like it doesn't have to go as high as you think it needs to go i I feel like I didn't. I I need somebody who like has like 120 frame per second setup to show me because like yeah. I I said I tried setting it up for the Xbox and PlayStation videos and uh, I didn't notice a difference at all. And I think that yeah. maybe it was a technical problem on my end. Like maybe I didn't do it right. Um, yeah. But I feel I, like I, I didn't notice any difference at all. I feel like to get the best out of that, you need a you would need a PC game that where you can set the frame rates to, because otherwise, I don't know if you can do it like really on a console. You can set the uh, on Xbox at least. You there's there's ways to. Do oh, you it. can. Yeah, and Gears of War only yeah. the multiplayer goes up to 120 frames per second. Right, but I think there was a 
something going on the way the xbox was talking to the monitor maybe it didn't yeah. do it right or maybe the change is just so incremental that it didn't matter to me i mean yeah. i can tell the difference between 30 frames and 60 frames like visually i can say oh that looks like yeah. 60 frames but from 60 to 120 maybe it's not as easy to tell the difference or yeah. i i had a technical problem well it's like the transition from 1080p to 4k for movies like the the jump sounds like a big jump but for most people they're not going to be able to tell the difference between the two right so it, it's just it's this innate human desire to always have the, the highest number or whatever you know you hear sometimes games have like a really large open world that's five times bigger than you know san andreas or whatever um but then you play the game you realize it's boring because yeah while it's bigger it does not exactly make a doesn't exactly make for a better game so yeah i you know i, I watched back uh the the first the, the switch review from ign when it came out they, they yeah when they reviewed the console and they talked about how Breath of the Wild had bad performance issues, and it it was only thirty frames a second, and it dipped in certain areas. Yeah, and now you play that game, and you don't notice anything like that. Like, like there yeah. are there are dips in frame rate and whatnot, but like that's so normal in like all games now to like have yeah. a dip somewhere like that. Um, and yeah, it's only thirty frames per second, but it's a fucking tablet dude like give yeah. it a break <laughs> nah man nah man everything's got to run at 4k 120 with uh all the different types of hdr otherwise it's a it's a four out of ten i will say i don't mind going for higher frame rates for performance um i just don't think it makes for a bad game if it doesn't hit that mark if it has yeah. variable frame rates like if it's changing all the time that's a problem because yeah because then it, you start to freak out and it's like it's a, clearly a performance issue but if a game targets 30 frames per second versus 60 i really don't think uh it's it's most of the time it's not that big of a deal steady frame rate is what you want not high frame rate necessarily correct um i wish that we could see do games you guys think if they do an upshield switch till have upshield revised joy con to go with it did Asha you, fix drift lol. Did you get all that, Will? I uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I wish that um that wasn't a stigma, like like games that were like 30 frames a second or even less. Because yeah. I would love to see animated games be able to utilize like 12 frames a second. Yeah. Or um or more cinematic games utilize 24 frames a second. Why not? Why not take the hit in frame rate to make it look more cinematic and have a boost in performance? Well, remember when Miles Morales came out and everybody unlocked the the Spider Verse costume mm -hmm. and everybody talked about how great it was that like yeah. that costume in particular was missing frames to recreate the movie, and everybody thought it was super super cool and whatnot. Use that to, as a basis for making an entire game out of. See, now this this is dangerous territory because when that happened, I tweeted something about that. And yeah. a lot of people tweeted back and said something along the lines of, that's not low frame rate. That's animated on twos. What do you think that means? Yeah. <laughs> that's half the frame rate. You're animating on twos. Or one of them said it's less keyframes. Which, yeah. no, that's not what that means. It's literally a lower frame rate. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, a lot of animations are animated. I think I think Spider-Verse... Well, Spider-Verse has weird things are diff all different frame rates. Yeah, Miles has been in particular animated at different frame rate from uh, Peter. Yeah. I know that's specific. But as the movie progresses, he works up to full frame rate. Um but a lot of animations are are literally 12 frames a second like a lot yeah. of a lot of like hand drawn animations are just straight up 12 frames a second um yeah. so yeah i mean why like Cu cuphead i would have loved to have seen cup cuphead runs at 60 frames per second and it yeah. looks freaking like it's a beautiful game but it looks weird to see cuphead physically like slide around the screen at 60 but his animations are 12 
Like that's yeah. that it looks if they just made the whole thing 12, I feel like it would have it wouldn't have had that weird sort of like effect where you can tell what's going to move and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh but also I didn't play the game all the way through. It gets very hard towards the end. I'm sure there's people yeah. who are like really into how like they could see every single frame of bullets hitting them. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Stuff like that. Like like I wish that uh, it'd be more normal to be like our game runs at 12 frames here you go have a good time yeah does ponyo still hold the record for highest frame rate for an animated film says bb retro i don't know a lot of people talked about how uh akira was uh 24 frames a second but it wasn't it was like it was like like very small parts of like the action was uh, yeah was like I don't know. Is a high frame rate? Is Akira really known for like its frame rate? Because I know it's known for its detail. I th there's some so parts in Akira like the... that ramp up to like 24, but it's like for a split second, right. and it's to, it's to showcase speed, you know? Yeah. Uh, but no, a lot of anime and stuff will do that. It'll it'll ramp this frame rate and lower it and stuff. Well, a lot um, of anime will just have. Well, especially like TV anime will just have shitty frame rate. Yeah, it'll just purpose. stop. It'll yeah. just stop. The whole yeah. thing just like, stops moving. You know, yes, especially like older anime like Speed Racer and Voltron and things like that. But even like modern anime, it's a lot of like just standing there and talking mm -hmm. and don't really move. So, but that that's what I mean. Like you have a you have a game that's supposed to look like an anime and it's running at sixty frames per second. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why <laughs> don't just don't. Uh, I feel like lower frame rate would be used to emphasize speed. I think that that is in uh, live action. You, they like shoot at a high frame rate and then play it back at 24 so that you get slow motion. No, what about uh, right? Saving Private Ryan did a thing where like it was like it was like a really low frame rate or something wasn't it yeah something like it was missing frames i think yeah yeah it was just, no yeah. it was purposely choppy yeah that's the opposite of what uh animation does i think i don't know there's a vi there's a great video on uh that i watched on youtube that was uh, talking about the myth of akira being in 24 frames yeah okay uh private ryan was shot at 24 frames a second but with a 45 degree shutter meaning mm. uh they weren't opening the camera shutter very far when shooting giving it its choppy effect there you go there that's what it is and then you have uh mad max which was that was i did not like how that made me feel weird <laughs> when i saw that in theaters the, yeah. the first uh, the first scene is, is all different frame rates and i remember sitting in the theater going there's nobody is nobody experiencing what i'm experiencing right now i'm freaking out watching this movie it feels like i'm playing a bad video game well i i mean that was done on purpose that was done to really accentuate like the the intensity and the confusion and and, and the, the fear that was going on uh for max you know, just changing all the frame rates different times. I think it worked. It was, listen, it was a great movie, but but they yeah. were just, they just decided, hey, you know what? If we feel like this scene's slowing down, we'll just, we'll just speed it up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, just ramp it up. Uh, all right. I wish I could find, can I find that YouTube video? Uh, I'm what? sure. I'm sure ne next week we're gonna have so many comments about f fucking frame rates. Oh yeah. Uh, Akira, the 24 frames a second myth. Here you go. Everybody, watch this. It's by uh, it's by A. P. Latanzi. He's a good video. Um. We were talking about resolution, and that's what got us here. Yes. Frame rate's more important than resolution. Or at least it, a steady it is more frame important. rate. 
a steady yeah. frame rate is more important. But they go, but they do go hand in hand. You know, you, you expect like when there's a resolution standard, you expect the frame rate to meet that standard to an extent. Right. Uh, okay. Hey, let's talk about. Well, for, let's go through these. Uh, we got. Is Streamlabs working for you? Yes. Because when you logged I'm in, it, it refreshed. All I'm seeing is a white screen. Uh, refresh the screen. I've been doing that. I get recent. I'm on recent events, and I just see nothing. It's, maybe, it's white. <laughs> maybe you gotta log out and log back in. When you logged in, it refreshed mine. Like I saw it yeah. refresh. Log out. Let me try. Um. Oh. Yeah, you logged in again. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, came white, a cat. White screen. With 100 bits, who says, Do you guys think if they do an upscaled switch, they'll have upscaled revised Joy Cons to go with it, aka fixed drift? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think Nintendo's um, trying that, that, uh, that hard. I'd imagine they like would probably fix the Joy, the joystick in some capacity, but the overall design of the Joy Con probably isn't going to change. So that's another thing. Like, uh, people ask if it's going to be thinner. It can't be thinner than the Joy-Con unless they redesign the Joy-Con. Yeah. So, no, I don't think it's the, the new Switch would be thinner. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get a brand new Joy-Con design either. I think that'd be a, that's a stretch. I, I mean, yeah. it, it should be easy enough to just fix the stick and that's it. Like, Sony does that all the time. They have freaking... They always do like a like a like a little incremental change on the controller, you know? Yeah. Um, or at least I did it with the PlayStation Four. Um, so I don't see why Sony, why Nintendo can't do that. But I mean, they're they 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 always make a big deal when they release stuff. Nintendo. Yeah. Um. We got Prime Ritus with 150 bits trying to play Cyberpunk at 4K 120 frames per second in handheld mode. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? I How mean, big is the try screen? Play, <laughs> try playing Cyberpunk at 720p 60 on on a computer. <laughs> that barely works. On an Xbox One S. Yeah. Uh, came a cat with 10 bits. A few more to apologize for Italian lady interrupting. So I'm sorry. I thought she'd be muted. I thought she'd be muted. She was. It was literally muted. I had it muted. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's when Will logged in. It freaked it out. Maybe. I'm gonna remute it. Uh, small sout. Thank you for the three months. Hey, now we can move on to Mario Day. Today's the day. Yay! Tomorrow's it's... the day. Oh my god! I thought it was Tomorrow three. is Mario Day. Today's the ninth, Bob. Get your head out of the gutter. I, dude, I woke up from a nap right before we started this, <laughs> and I felt terrible. And then I had my coffee, and I feel. All right. Well, the coffee got me up, got me. You may here. be feeling terrible, but I'll tell you what's terrible: these Mario Day deals. They are terrible. They are bad. This is not a good Mario Day so far because mm. it's not Mario Day yet. But tomorrow will be Mario Day, no. and it will be not great. It'll be a bad Mario Day unless they just announce a bunch of stuff. I literally thought today was Mario Day, and I was like, they didn't announce anything. Today sucks. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some surprises tomorrow. Doubtful. But anyway, but anyway <laughs> here here are the deals. Uh they're not great. Um no. so oh sadly this isn't available in Europe and you can find the full list below, so you can't even get these deals <laughs> in Europe. Luigi's Mansion 3, $39. Super uh Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, $39. Oh, they're all $39. $38.99. Yeah. That's a weird price. Mario oh, it's a thirty-five. It's it's thirty-five percent off. Oh, for Mario's thirty-fifth anniversary. Cute. They really, they really crunched the budget for that one extra dollar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mario Tennis Aces, 
Super Mario Maker 2, Super Mario Party. All of these games are frequently on sale all the time. Yeah. Maybe um, Luigi's Mansion might be the least on sale ever. But yeah. uh, I've seen all of these games on sale before. And I think Mario Maker was just on sale like last week. And these aren't even like this isn't even all the Mario games. Like I'm surprised uh Odyssey is not included. Uh new Super Mario Brothers U. Uh I mean uh 3D World Bowser's Fury is new, so I, you know, I can understand that, but it's still uh it, it's a partial list of Mario games available on Switch. You know? Yeah. Um like I'm Mario not- Kart is not included in this. Yeah, a lot of these games are old enough where throw us a bone you know like like yeah. i understand mario 3d world doesn't need to be on sale just came out totally fine super mario 3d yeah. all-stars i'll even give them that i mean it's a little much yeah. for what 60 dollars is a little much for what comes with it but it's limited it's limited time it's they're going to burn every copy they're going to all self-destruct yeah. at the end of the month paper mario the origami king not gonna oh, yeah. give them that that should be on sale at least yeah. a couple bucks like that's pretty new but not new enough in my book yeah super mario brothers u deluxe i mean that's still that's like a top seller on the switch so that's why they don't want to give it on sale but come on dude be a bro yeah i think regardless uh, yeah everybody already has mario kart 8 and odyssey and mario u but still this is like this is your 35th anniversary of mario it's a fairly significant milestone you should honor it by having all of his games on sale Here's another weird one. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That should definitely be on sale. That has yes. been on sale before. Why is yes. that not on sale? Maybe it's a Ubisoft problem? I doubt it. Mario I'm, I'm Kart- sure Ubisoft would have jumped all over it. Mario Kart is another one that is frequently... I mean, it's never on sale. But it is a top seller. So that's why they don't want to give it on sale. But I feel like that's why they should give it on sale because they've already made so much money off of it already. They can afford to, you know, do a 35% discount on it. Also, I would hope that they would sell more if they put it on sale. People who are like on the fence about it, maybe they'll be like, oh, I'll get it or I'll get it for, I'll get a second time. Yeah. Arcade Archives Mario Brothers is not on sale, but don't buy that game because it's Arcade Archives (laughs) and those games are bad. They don't even have versus Super Mario Brothers on 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 this yeah. uh, list of Mario games because they don't want people to be confused. That's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, not a great uh, not great sales for Mario Day. Yeah, but there's some pretty cool swag available for Mario Day. Um, at Nintendo New York City, they got a bunch of stuff, but Nintendo said, if you can't make it there, you can just get it online. Yeah. Uh, so these, so those, those pin sets that we've been, uh, you know, murdering ourselves to get. Yes. We learned that, uh, you could just get these little penny arcade things if you don't want to go through all of the trouble. These things are expensive though. This one, yeah. These three pins that I have in my hand, twenty five dollars. So if you want the whole set, it's like it's over a hundred dollars. Um. So, uh, yeah, you could just buy the pins. Yeah, they come with more uh, pins, three times more yeah. pins. But you can and just they buy are the pins. currently on sale for sixteen dollars. Ooh, so still, I mean, it's a lot more than five dollars. Yeah, <laughs> but still, if you got the money and you're sad that you missed out, there you go. Uh, you could just buy that. Um, yeah. I guess I want to click on this. They got a really cool hoodie. I had this in my hand, and I was like, I'm never gonna wear this, but it's pretty <laughs> cool. It's a, it's Mario 3D World. Oh no, it's all yeah. it's all of them. Is it 3D all of them? World? Oh Mario yeah, thir- 35th anniversary. Oh, maybe I should have gotten this. Yeah. I mean, I can still get it. Oh, out of stock. F. A lot of these, I think, are out of stock. I gotta go. I gotta go to the store. It I says do it's like how till the thirteenth. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's only this week. I do like how the t-shirts come in the boxes for the game. Yeah. 
when you go to the store, the Nintendo store, they have those boxes standing up, and you're like, what is this? Oh, it's a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I legit thought it was, like, the games. Yeah. Um, they got cool hats. They have this mug that I got. It's this gold... Oh, they don't have it on here, but they, they have it on this picture. This gold mug right here. 35th anniversary mug. It's massive. Yeah. It's like a huge mug. It's cool, though. I, I got it for myself. Um, So if you live in New York, you could just go to the store. Uh, yeah. If you're not in New York, you could just go online and do some shopping. Everything's on sale, 35% off. Yes. And... Uh, if you see at the top, click here to complete a my, Ninten a my Nintendo mission commemorating the 35th anniversary of Mario and earn 100 platinum points. You know, the useless points. Success. <laughs> I have done it. Even though so I already have, uh, I'm, I'm getting the pins. What's this one? Oh, this is a dumb hoodie. Oh, but oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I don't need any. I don't need any more hoodies. I don't need any more Nintendo stuff. What am I talking about? <laughs> Is it even oh. possible for me to get these pins anymore? I think I've missed too many events. They keep adding new events. Yeah. Like that one. I hope there's more Mario Day stuff tomorrow. I hope that they announce some cool stuff. Maybe they'll announce that uh, Mario isn't dying at the end of the month. Did you see, apparently, uh, the Super Mario Brothers 3 cartoon is leaving Netflix on March 31st? I did see that. <laughs> I think <laughs> Nintendo is closing up shop on March 31st. I think they're, I can... they're They're just packing it all in. They're like, we had a good run 130 years or whatever. We're it's good. so effing F weird. <laughs> it is really weird. It's really weird. Or maybe they know something we don't. Oh, they definitely do. Maybe maybe the the friggin' the calamity is happening on March thirty first. Oh, yeah. Or on April first. April first is April Fool's Day. Maybe it's all a goof. I don't know. They seem like a very serious company. You know it'd be funny if on April first they're like, surprise, everything's back. April yeah. Fools, we're taking it all away again. <laughs> <laughs> um we got Mecha Dragon with one bit. Checking to see if it works. It works. And we got Daikalaza with 12 months. Oh my god, one year. Happy birthday, dads. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday. Um. All right. We got this little bitty. Xbox Series X controllers are they're all duds. They all they're all broken. It's just nice to know that Microsoft is also having problems with their controllers. For a while, it looked like it was just Nintendo and Sony. It's nice to see them. Yeah, it's nice to see them join the club. But of course, they have to be different, and it's not a, a drift of any kind. No, it just straight up don't work. <laughs> okay, so he, for, I, I want to like preface this by saying that like uh, it's really not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Microsoft is aware of unresponsive issues affecting some Xbox controllers and is looking into a fix. There are apparently some issues with the newest version of the Xbox wireless controller. Released alongside the launch of the Xbox Series X and S, various users have reported the controller is unresponsive when pressing buttons on the controller. Which means the controller doesn't control. Yeah. The issue has been reported when using the controller on both consoles and on PC. Luckily, Microsoft is aware of the issue and is looking into it, but a time frame was not provided. Quote, at Microsoft, we put all our products through rigorous quality assurance testing and are committed to providing customers with an unparalleled gaming experience. Microsoft told The Loadout. We are aware some players may be experiencing unresponsiveness with their new Xbox wireless controllers, and our teams are actively working on a solution. For the best experience, we encourage customers to visit Xbox support for assistance. This is just the latest issue facing controllers on consoles. We are all familiar with the Switch Joy-Con drift. 
Nintendo's president even apologized to Switch owners for the issue, but because the issue is part of a class action lawsuit in the U.S. and now in Canada, he was unable to respond about any specific actions. Nintendo is also facing a lawsuit by a French consumer organization, and several European countries are joining are jointly investigating the Joy-Con drift issue. Nintendo isn't alone, as some PS5 users have reported drift issues with Sony's new DualSense controller. Um obviously it's a problem if your controller doesn't control (laughs) right (laughs) obviously something's wrong there i just don't we don't know how widespread this issue is it's just an issue that has been noted by microsoft might happen on some i'd imagine that this wouldn't be that big of an issue because the series x controller is not that different from an xbox one controller Mm -hmm. you know because the series x can support xbox one controllers and vice versa um so i'd imagine that whatever the issues are are not that widespread and they should be relatively easy to fix compared to what's seemingly the the drift issues i mean uh the the series x controller uses a new wireless technology right but it has bluetooth in it too and it says that it doesn't work on pc so uh i don't know something's wrong something something seems i mean i don't know because we don't again we don't know how widespread it is so uh, i guess it's just something to look out for we'll see how yeah widespread it is i have yet to hear anybody who has drift on their playstation 5 controller uh i have yet to hear anybody who has an xbox series x controller that just don't work right i also don't know many people with new xboxes you know or who use them frequently yeah I use mine frequently. I don't know any- I'm the I'm the only one who I know who uses my Xbox frequently. Yeah. I don't even know. I think I know one person who has a Series X and I don't know if he used it. Is it, it Jake? Yeah. It's Jake. It's Jake. Yeah. I uh, yep, yep. Man man needs everything. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he won't buy a PlayStation though, even though he's the biggest Spider Man fan I know. <laughs> uh like- I th- I think you were blocked from logging into Twitch. I think that's what's been happening probably you know if that makes sense because i got i got an email I mean, I saying it was blocked i can do everything else on Streamlabs, but see the recent events well we'll uh fix it later because i don't want to yeah yeah no i'm buddy potential ways to log in here you could this see, is a next you could this see is a it, next week problem <laughs> yeah you could see it on the my screen if you look at yeah you could kind of see it like on the bottom there uh hey mecha dragon thanks for the prime subscription and for the 300 bits thanks for the reply on my twitter bob good to hear you say that anyone in my age in any age can learn to draw or let alone learn any new skill so mecha dragon tweeted at me and said uh question for the podcast Mm -hmm. uh but i didn't answer it on the podcast but i will now they asked um if it's if there's an age where it's too late to learn how to draw and I said, no, you can, any age is, you could just, yeah. you can learn how to draw at any age. And then I tried looking up like famous artists who started late and there really wasn't a lot. I thought that there would be a lot more. I thought Picasso started late, but apparently not. Um, a lot of people hit their stride when they, like later in life. Yeah. Mo- like Monet. Jack, Jack Kirby. Go ahead. <laughs> M- Monet like started when he was in his thirties. Yeah, that's that's as late as I could see. Like Jack Kirby, like he drew Fantastic Four and Hulk and uh, f- all those characters, like in his forties and fifties. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. But yeah, it's never too late to learn anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You you're gonna suck at it just suck yeah. at it just that's the yes. problem is that people are afraid of sucking at things just yeah. suck at it dude and it whatever yeah it happens just don't be embarrassed to suck at it yeah. i'm learning dude i don't know anything it's yeah. just, uh, and take it your time sucking you know <laughs> <laughs> yes no one likes a no one likes a f- someone who tries to blow through it right yeah and then marth marth you says how's the japanese going bob uh Waruri des. That means bad. <laughs> um, 
that's what I mean. Like I, I'm very bad at Japanese. I am struggling yeah. really hard. And these these last few lessons I've been taking, I've been I've just I've been like this. Like I, I, I I'm I'm having a hard time here. But yeah, you gotta suck. You gotta suck at it until you don't suck at it anymore. Anyway, where are we at? Uh, Marvel's Avengers XP grind is about to become even slower for some reason. Oh, cool. I love the Marvel's Avengers game. It's so good. <laughs> uh, like, I feel bad because my wife got me for this for Christmas. And, like, I did want to play it. But now it just sounds like they're actively making me not want to. This picture is bad. <laughs> Marvel's Avengers, the action role-playing game from Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix, is finally coming to current-gen consoles on March 18th, uh, but it's also getting another change. After that date, it's going to take even longer to reach the game's max character level because the developer is increasing the XP requirement. According to the developer, the quick level-ups and rapid XP gain was something it could, something it thought could be confusing for new players, in part because each level required about the same amount of XP to progress through, rather than requiring more subsequent levels. Uh, this has led to pacing is issues such as skill points currently being rewarded too fast, which may be confusing and overwhelming for new players. We want, th we want each decision to, to invest in a skill or heroic to be more meaningful, said the developer, to help reduce the amount of progress players can make quickly the XP needed to advance in levels later in the game is being increased starting at uh, character level 25. To conclude the post, the developer recommends that anyone who has a character that isn't already level 50, um, level, uh, sorry, that isn't already level 50, uh, to level them quickly before the change takes effect. Of course, this means players starting fresh on PS5 or Series X will be forced into the new, slower leveling system. One thing that's not entirely clear is why this change is necessary at all. Not starting the XP increase until level 25 means that new players might still get confused on skills. More importantly, the slog of leveling a character all the way to level 50 was already one of the slowest, grindiest parts of Marvel's Avengers, Making that process even more tedious, especially for new players, is confusing to say the least. The March 18th update uh, for Marvel's Avengers will also include the release of Hawkeye, as well as a new change to cosmetics that makes them slightly less random and gives players more control over which ones they unlock. Update. Uh, Crystal Dynamics took to Reddit on Thursday night to provide more insight into the XP changes and explain the studio's thinking. The studio said it's changing the grind because players were often leveling two or three times during a single mission, even at higher levels, because the XP wasn't scaling well enough or it was scaling too well in this case. The problem we were seeing and hearing was that you would immediately get more skill points than you had time to review, apply, and get used to before embarking on your next mission and gaining your next few levels, Crystal Dynamics said. Hopefully, you can see the issue here. Uh, perhaps making the points more even was... Perhaps making the point more even... Sorry. Perhaps making the point even more confusing, Crystal Dynamics also noted that it was... That it is changed... That it has changed early leveling in Marvel's Avengers to be even faster than it already was, which would seem to add to confusion over skill points rather than reduce it. Overall, Crystal Dynamics said it hopes the new changes will add three to three to five hours to the act of reaching the level cap. That is a dumb reason. That this is was a lot more confusing than I initially thought it was. That was very confusing. But it yeah. They're they changed so it sounds like to me they made it they 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 made it take longer to level up because people didn't have enough time to use their skill points yeah that such is... as skill points yeah they because people didn't have enough time to like go over like their skill points and their xp and their heroics powers and whatnot 
that is a bad fix for that i think yeah just especially because like you you, you typically do that in a pause menu yeah but may, maybe they felt like it was slowing down the action too much i don't know because if you're x if you're leveling up fast that's not slowing down the action that's speeding up the action no, no, but, but 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 like getting skill points too frequently. Every time you get a skill point, you got to pause. You got to look through all the stuff, and then you got to use it. That's why I don't like games with freaking skill points because like I don't like having to go through all those menus. It slows down the action for me. But right. I like games like Mass Effect Andromeda, which has a button where you go easy skill points, and it just puts the skill points places for you. Like that, I like that. So like, yeah, that sounds like a solution for this. Just have an easy like randomized or or not randomized but like a skill points option that will just put them in the right spots for you like oh i want to be a rogue so it'll put them on like the speed and i don't know what a rogue is i don't play rpg <laughs> but yeah no i get i have they took the easiest game easiest concept to make a game out of and they really needlessly complicated it there was a lot of problems with this game from a lot of places it yeah. should have just been a uh just a good single player experience yeah like i I get i get wanting to be multiplayer i can understand putting a co-op feature in it but uh, just making it a destiny style grindathon it's just it's a bizarre it's a bizarre take i know that it didn't do well at launch um yeah but do you think that it did well over time because of the grindiness and, and all the stuff they added. Like maybe even though people aren't happy about the game, maybe it's paying back anyway. I'd be interested to know that. I don't know. Edible Jim Socks says, imagine wanting your game to be a slog to play through. <laughs> yeah. I remember I when it came know. out, I was seeing a lot of mixed, uh, mixed yeah. stuff about it. I was hearing really good things about the the single player campaign, like that on its own is it's not that bad. It's, it's actually not. pretty good, but the primary focus of the game was obviously the multiplayer, mm-hmm. and it it bogged down everything else. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's upsetting. High death theory says didn't its player base drop drastically? Uh, it did at one point. Yeah. But doesn't it have like yeah. microtransactions and stuff? Like maybe yeah. maybe there's some like whales that are really like keeping it afloat. Uh, so despite initial strong sales, uh, Avengers failed to turn a profit for Square Enix, with the publisher reporting an estimated loss of sixty three million dollars for their latest fiscal period at the time. Holy crap! Yeah. All right, so it looks like it didn't pay off. <laughs> Ghost Raid in the chat says the game uh, has less than six hundred players on Steam right now. <laughs> At Boy. this moment, I feel bad. I'm currently playing Star Wars Squadrons right now, but maybe when I'm done with that, I'll switch over to this just just because I feel bad. Uh, Kevin Kansas says the single player campaign isn't bad; it makes the game somewhat worth getting on sale. Everything after is rough. Yeah, but so I thought the single player, I thought the multiplayer was the single player. I thought it was like Destiny style, like no, like you could just squad up with people. No, it has a it has a traditional story campaign. Oh. Where like uh, Kamala Khan has to reunite the Avengers and figure out what really happened the day Captain America didn't die. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um how's uh how's uh Squadrons? I'm not far in. I don't hate it, but it's very hard. Cuz they tried to make it like a flight sim, which means you move with the right stick and you throttle with the left Ooh. and it's entirely in first person so i am constantly smashing into things <laughs> i don't know i have it i just haven't touched it yeah i would say I don't know how I feel about that i would say cuz it has four different difficulties and the lowest is it's just called story mode so i would say start there and then just work your way up if you feel like you know, you need a better challenge or whatnot. I am definitely it, it, not going to play multiplayer on that game. Definitely. Yeah, not. no. Yeah, no. It's it, they're definitely going for more of a sim type mm-hmm. game, which 
I think is cool, but I don't know if like console is the right audience for that. Hey, speaking of multiplayer games, uh, that oh don't, yeah, that don't need multiplayer. <laughs> Uh, Watch Dogs Legion's multiplayer on PC has been delayed forever. Yeah. Or indefinitely. Because of bugs. Uh, yeah. Hold on, my computer is loading. Uh, I got a pop-up. Yesterday, Ubisoft announced that Watch Dogs Legion's online mo mode on PC has been delayed indefinitely due to serious bugs that need to be fixed. And some parts of multiplayer on console will also be delayed due to, you guessed it, more bugs. <laughs> says Kotaku. Uh, announced on Twitter yesterday, the PC version of Legion's online mode has been delayed due to bugs causing the game to crash. Uh, that sounds like a pretty bad bug. Yeah. No new date was given for when to expect the PC version's online mode to be released, with Ubisoft simply saying, quote, we will communicate the new launch date as soon as possible. The console versions of Watch Dogs Online are still coming on March 9th, as announced last month. Uh, and then here's their statement, which I'm not going to read because it looks boring. <laughs> While the console version of Watch Dogs Legions will still be launching in a few days, the tactical, the tactical ops missions won't be available until later in the, in the month on the 23rd. Okay, so you got some form of multiplayer on, on consoles. On console, yeah. These raid-like missions are bigger and more challenging end-game activities that Ubisoft suggests only groups of four or more take on. So, like, so like raids. Um, yeah. Oh, and on PlayStation consoles, players will have a limited in-game text chat until Ubisoft fixes that too. <laughs> so things are a bit buggy overall, regardless of your platform of choice. Uh, so what is it going to have like Rocket League style text chat? Cool, I, nice for shot. Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watch Dogs Legion's Good online hacking. mode. <laughs> Watch Dogs Legion's online mode was first delayed back in November of last year due to bugs that the team wanted to fix first before launching any multiplayer modes. I imagine the dozen of people who were excited to play Watch Dogs Legion's online are sad about this. Meanwhile, I still need to finish the game after it erased hours of progress right before I reached the end. That sucks. Yeah, This man is never beating that game. Um, Two things. One, uh, it's been a while since I've heard of the PC version of a console-focused game having bugs like this. Yeah. Because... Uh, and and two, um, uh, it's not weird for a single player focused game to delay its multiplayer. That's like a thing I, that a lot of yeah. developers have been doing recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, back in the day, I remember when like games used to be broken for PC because they were focused mostly on consoles. Mm -hmm. but something changed pretty recently where they've been kind of developing for pc and then just farting it out onto consoles and everything's been yeah. fine mostly but this seems to have the opposite problem so uh i mean i don't think anybody's really uh that hard pressed to play the watchdogs no. legions multiplayer no i don't think people really are into watchdogs anymore like I it was I, it was I the hot new thing when the generation launched. The, the second one I know has fans, but nobody really talks about it. And then there's this. I liked the first Watch Dogs. I liked it a lot. I had a good time with it. But that that was the beginning of my burnout with Ubisoft games. Yeah, that was fine. Like, I liked the game. I felt like the, it should have been more. Like, they could have done a lot more with that concept. And I'm, from what I've heard two does that but i just i don't care about the ubisoft style of game anymore yeah so yeah i don't know what's gonna get me to play a ubisoft game again honestly yeah. like uh i mean maybe if this if two is like four dollars on a sale i'll get it but i just haven't had any interest in it i mean maybe uh aren't they making a star wars game they're making a, they're making an open world Star Wars game. That might get me to play Ubisoft games again. Yeah. They really just need to change the formula, dude. Like yeah. make something. Good I mean, time. they're still making a lot of money, so I don't want to uh talk too much trash on Ubisoft, but 
Well, when you turn a tactical espionage game like Ghost Recon into an open world sandbox, you got to you got to stop. You know you have a problem. Yeah. Um Kevin Kenson says Spider Tank is the only positive memory I have about one. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> My favorite memory is uh what do you look at your child's grave? And there's yeah. like this big like sad cutscene, and then you come out of the cutscene and it just says press X to vault, and then you vault yeah. over the grave. <laughs> you're not supposed to. It's just you're in the game world, so that just happens. Yeah. Uh, uh Kami Thom says maybe I'll play an uh a Ubisoft game when the ex executives responsible for covering up sexual harassment face legal consequences. That too. Uh, That's important. I don't, I don't think I know about that. You know about that. I don't think I know about it. We've talked about it on this show. We, I, I, we always talk about Gearbox. Right. No, no, we've mentioned Ubisoft. We, we haven't like read a full article, but we've mentioned it in passing how like there was a lot of sexual harassment going on and they, that just they let it happen for years uh circa rvn says ghost recon wildlands was amazing will specifically will for some reason <laughs> come on in my top five games so Look, i i was i love tom clan well i used to be a big fan of tom clancy games yeah. um i was a little excited for for ghost recon wildlands and then i played it at an e3 demo and i played it and i said this feels exactly like the division and i yeah. don't want to play that again so yeah, i, I didn't buy it yeah i used to like ghost recon because it was like a harder version of rainbow six and i actually really liked uh what the hell was it is the one you didn't like i think it was ghost recon future soldier because it was okay. basically, it was like Splinter Cell, but with a team. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was really cool. Um, but then they just turned it into the division, like you said. And the division is basically a, a bad watchdogs, which is basically just Assassin's Creed in the future. So I really, uh, I really miss old school Rainbow Six. Yeah. I, I loved three. I loved the Vegas games. And then they went and did this <laughs> with the yeah. like i like the new rainbow six, rainbow six uh siege is good it's yeah. just not you know the rainbow six that i have been wanting in my life yeah and i don't know if they'll go back because rainbow six siege is doing so well so i don't know yeah um bob villain thank you for the prime subscription and mm, wood enthusiast thank you for the subscription what type of wood are we talking about like the person yeah. or the material and mecha dragon with 30 bits by the way will i miss you nice to see you again miss you too buddy have you not seen the podcast <laughs> <laughs> are you in are you one of those who didn't know the podcast existed tech tech nanner says other games have taken over the mantle of tactical entry type games and a lot of them seem to be top down type games yeah i don't i just yeah. want my friggin i want my friggin tactical rainbow six back i want i i, I love doing terrorist hunts in rainbow six with like a team and like with friends that was freaking fun i think six days in fallujah is gonna be that game that would be i would love that but you know hopefully they you know because it's dealing with a, a real world battle they handle it with you know the delicacy it requires and don't just turn it into call of duty right yeah it's but... kind of what rainbow six siege was it was like a freaking call of duty uh yeah. situation all right uh two bits from mecha dragon no of course bob i just forgot to let him know at what better time than the 21st episode <laughs> yeah uh sony's latest patent application of banana here's the banana uh, so Sony Interactive Entertainment has filed a patent application to use a banana for a PlayStation controller. We know what you're thinking, and it's not this. And it's a picture of the infamous uh, PlayStation 3 boomerang controller. Yes. The patent, uh, spied by GamesIndustry.biz on Tuesday, is actually for a method that turns a non-luminous passive object 
being used, being held by a user into a controller, recognizing virtual buttons, virtual button locations on it with a banana used as an illustrated example. Sony's idea would conceivably work with anything in the user's hands, uh, whether a coffee mug, a book, a package of cold cuts, or a tube of Preparation H. Why? Uh, that That's butt cream for... I know what that there. is. <laughs> it would be desirable... I'm 31 if years user... old. I know what that is. <laughs> It would be desirable if a user could use an inexpensive, simple, non-electronic device as a video game peripheral, says the patent application. In the example Sony provides, uh, players could grasp one or two bananas, oranges, or other inanimate objects and move them about, uh, effectively using them as one or two analog sticks. In another illustration, virtual buttons are mapped onto a banana, which suggests a virtual reality headset might be involved too. This all sounds like something that Dylan Rudyism Beck would love. He's the Twitch streamer who plays games wrong using silly objects or costumes as a controller. In fact, Rudyism literally played Overwatch using a dozen bananas. Still, it's important to remember that this is a patent application, which does not mean they're there's a finished product or even plans for one. Um, I want to see this guy. So, so this reminds me of a little device called the Makey Makey. That was like the first thing I ever kickstarted. It's a right. little thing that uh, looks like a like an NES controller, but it's a it's a it's a PCB board, right? And you can clip things onto it, uh, and you can base using like I don't know. Basically, you can turn anything into a controller with that thing, or you can turn anything mm. into a button. is is a, is a better example. Uh, and one of the things they showed off was bananas. You could make a banana into like a keyboard. I'm wondering if uh, this guy who played, oh, you can't even see it. Yeah, the the vods unavailable. I'm wondering if that this guy Rudyism, uh, if he used the makey makey to make the little banana controller. Yeah, maybe. But this seems seemed- similar. This seems like a different situation. It seems like so how yeah. how are they going to recognize what part of the banana you're pressing? I don't they uh the article suggested um you would have to be wearing a VR headset or some kind and so mm-hmm. that you can like see the buttons on the banana and you would know that you would press the virtual button. You ever see those like laser uh keyboards? Yeah. It's like a it's like a laser beam that like goes on the like, Table yeah, and you like can that. like yeah. type on the table. Sounds a little bit like that. Yeah. Except you know it'd be in VR, so you don't have to like actually have lasers going out. Um, yeah. But the thing I'm talking about, the makey makey, it makes the whole thing a button because like you put a clip on it and then you put the other clip on like your bracelet or something, and when you touch it, yeah, it completes the circuit. Um. All right, so I guess you're gonna be playing a game with a banana sometime soon. <laughs> everybody, everybody, get just uh, technology's amazing. PlayStation 5. Yeah. Um, next, we got Diablo 2 Remaster. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, it will use... Hold on, I'm just writing something down. It will use your original save files if you still play Diablo 2 from what? the original Diablo 2. What? Diablo 2 Resurrected. Uh, that's the remake of Diablo 2. Uh, Players of Diablo 2 Resurrected who still have access to their original Diablo 2 save files uh, will be able to use them in the remaster. In an interview with IGN Middle East, uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected producer Matthew Cinderquist confirmed the news, adding that Blizzard brute forced the feature in and was surprised to find that it worked. Oh, Back when we were working on the remaster, we wondered if old save files uh, would work and we were we kind of shoved it in and it worked and we were like okay that's the best feature ever cinderquist said <laughs> uh this means players will be able to pick up where they left off if they still have access to the files with all the audiovisual upgrades exclusive to the remaster in tow the number of people who still have 20 year old save files to hand uh is probably pretty slim but it's a lovely nod to how uh referential the team is being about bringing the original game to modern machines. Resurrected is effectively playing the game 
Uh, Resurrected is effectively playing the original game with a layer of updated 3D clothing on top. Uh, As executive producer Rod Ferguson told us at BlizzCon, it's a remaster, not a remake. We wanted the game. (laughs) Uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected will feature 4K graphics, 7.1 surround sound, updated 3D mo- 3D models and remastered cutscenes when it launches later this year, but you'll be able to switch back and forth between the original looks and the new ones with the press of a button. It will be available on a wide variety of platforms, including PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch. Uh, earlier this week, we learned uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected will offer a single and multiplayer uh, alpha. Players can sign up for uh, for it on Battle.net. The game was revealed during this year's BlizzCon, which was also had the announcements such as the Blizzard Arcade Collection and World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. I would imagine this is a feature that would only be on PC, but they don't specify. They don't know. Uh, I haven't found anywhere that says there's a cross save either. Yeah, so how would they do that? If you, I mean, this is freaking awesome. If you have a freaking yeah, twenty year old save file for Diablo two, you could just pick up where you left off in the re- remaster. Yeah, but can you do it on your Switch? Can you take your that's, PC that's save file from twenty fun. years ago and fart it over to the Switch? Yeah, that would be freaking cool. But that would also, like you said, imply some sort of a cross save situation. Yeah. Which might be possible because Diablo 2 was only came out on PC. So I'd imagine there's some sort of like open source code in, in the save file that could be, you know, transferred between consoles. Yeah, I mean, who is this? This Blizzard. is a Blizzard, yeah. Yeah. I mean, all these old school PC companies, like they know what they're they they know how to develop. <laughs> yeah. It's, it seems. Um I'm glad that they were able to put the work in to make something like this work. That's a freaking really cool feature. Like imagine being able to have like your Jedi Academy save file and like pick up from where that was. That'd be freaking awesome. I have to check because I think with the exception of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, if the game is playable on Xbox One or Xbox Series, your original Xbox save files can also transfer. What, so like what? Skies what are you talking about? So like Crimson Skies is an original Xbox game. And I think, because that's also playable on Xbox One, I think your save file can transfer over as well to Xbox oh. One. I think. So I mean, I I mean that happened with uh with my Xbox Live Arcade version of Sonic Adventure 2, which I seem yes. to talk about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um but that was a 360 game. I'm Correct. talking about original Xbox. And I think I made the save file on my Xbox One. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know how well that actually worked. Edible Jim Sox says news update. Piplup has official Twitter and Instagram accounts. <gasps> I don't. Uh, oh, hey, uh. Oh, there you go. Is this it? Is this it? Not verified. Unverified. How do I even know it's true? Uh, I can't wait, read this. this. The, po- the Pokemon Company launches Project Piplup. This is via Game Rant. Similar to the previous Project Eevee, the Pokemon Company has launched Project Piplup. To celebrate Shinho's popular starter Pokemon, possibly to get Poke fans geared up for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl coming later this year. Not only is 2021 the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, it's also the 15th anniversary of Diamond and Pearl, which makes this announcement for their remix even more exciting. Oh, yeah. No, it's uh, it's official. It's only in Japanese, but... I'll be able to read it someday. <laughs> yeah. Last news, Resident Evil D-Make for Genesis. What? Okay. I I just threw this in here because I found it randomly and I thought it was cool. So that looks freaking sick. This team is make is D-making Resident the original PlayStation Resident Evil 
for the Sega Genesis. And not only are they demaking it, this isn't a PC game. This is an actual Genesis game uh, that you can play in either a Genesis emulator or even on uh, actual Genesis hardware. That is freaking cool. I would there love is a, to try that. There's a demo available right now. It's not very good, the demo, uh, but it gives you an idea of what they're trying to do. What do you mean it's not very good? So I pl- I actually played this right before we started streaming. Okay. Uh, you play as Claire. Uh, she doesn't animate. Claire? So she's basically, yeah. She's basically just a T pose. I see Jill. Moving up and down the hall. You see Jill. If you scroll down, you'll see a, a picture of Claire. No, it's like see... noticeably Claire. I just see. I just see it's... Jill. Oh, on the right. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Those, those oh. last three pictures. Yeah. Oh, wait. But the first two look so. The first two gifts look amazing. What is that? I know. That those those three are, I think, an early an earlier build. But this is what the demo is. It's those oh, three pictures. That looks so much worse. I was so excited yeah. about this, and then and then I now I see the stuff on the right that looks terrible. I mean, this is all work in progress, and from what I've played in the demo, I get what they're going for. But that probably shouldn't have been the demo they released because <laughs> it's it's one it's like one hallway and a couple of rooms. And, like, it's not clear at all what you have to do. Like I said, Claire doesn't animate when she walks. She doesn't even T-pose. She just stands still and glides across the screen. Ooh. Um, yeah. It, there's no sound. Um, it's, yeah, it's not a good first impression, but I can dig what they're doing. And hopefully they are able to continue on this and finish it. And release it in a in a good enough state that I would want to play the whole thing through because I think a Genesis version of Resident Evil is kind of rad. So, what is this uh, video that's at the top? Is this irrelevant? Also, no. I think well, there's there's a two versions. There's this one is from September. Wait, which one? The v- top left. I that's this website's weird. Yeah. Because I think the game is officially called Bio Evil, so they don't get sued. Oh, the one on the right is from 2017. Yeah, this has been going yeah, this on has for been... quite some time. Yeah, looks like the freaking Game Boy game is what it looks like. I mean, they did try to put Resident Evil on the Game Boy. These two gifts on the left are freaking sick, and it looks nothing like that, and I'm sad about it. Yeah, well. Hopefully, you know, like I said, it's a work in progress. This is obviously like a fan game. Um, but hopefully, like, they'll be able to continue working on it and be able to make something interesting. Bio Evil is a brand new and original game for the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, a true 16 bit nostalgic platforming experience running on genuine Sega hardware that will make Sega fans. That would make fans of Sega's golden era feel warm and fuzzy. You can't say this is an original game. And and expect it to hold up in court. <laughs> yeah. Um Well maybe th- maybe that's why they threw Claire in there. Lonosi in the chat says, What did you expect from people who want old games? What the, what does that mean? Yeah. I want old games. Just because I want old games doesn't mean they can't be good. <laughs> Yeah. Um also Savior of Screens says what Bethesda tiles do you think Microsoft will slap on the exclusive uh, so I uh, I was reading this. Oh because, we didn't really Yeah, I wanted to talk really about t- uh but what ha- nothing really happens. Bethesda just Microsoft just so, uh, Bethesda is now they, officially a part of Microsoft. They right. I remember they announced but uh, Microsoft was acquiring Bethesda like months ago, right. but today all the legal mumbo jumbo was finalized. So now officially Bethesda is a part of Microsoft Game Studios. Yeah, and they like, put out a tweet. Legally, yeah, they put out a tweet saying so, and people were like, 
still tweeting about like exclusivity and stuff and saying like, oh, well, this means this and all that. They released a statement that said something to the effect of certain future games, some games will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. Yeah, which we already knew. Yeah, they already said that. Like we already knew that there would be some that because because they're going to use those studios to develop exclusive games at some point in the future like that shouldn't be right. su a surprise to anybody but it doesn't mean anything about like skyrim and like fallout and like stuff like fallout. that being exclusive or, yeah like we don't know yet what's what the fate of that stuff is and i, I would mean be i'm surprised if they were exclusive to be honest i'm sure if it if you played the game on playstation you'll probably continue to play the latest version of that game on playstation yeah um but like it's questionable a game like Starfield. Uh, we don't know what that's gonna uh, if that's gonna be exclusive or not. Uh, Indiana Jones will probably not be exclusive, but there's that uh, there's that hint that it might be. I, I think that a lot of these games like Elder Scrolls or Fallout or even maybe Starfield will probably have some feature or some cool thing that'll yeah. be on Xbox and not on other consoles. So this is what this is what they the officially say. With the addition of the Bethesda creative teams, gamers should know that Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, including some titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. Yeah. So they very uh, specifically say some new titles. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any new news here. Mm -hmm. not, this is all stuff we've heard about already. Anyway, uh, hey, it's time for this little thing called the tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is by a Twitter account called Promoted Tweets Advertised Twit. It is a dog. I'm going to promote this tweet just to make Alan famous. And it's promoted tweet of just a picture of a dog. <laughs> and then you look at it and it's just a dog. He's just a, he's just a, he's dumb. He's dumb happy. This dog. That's how it's, I would. It's, but he's, he's such a good boy. <laughs> he's a great, this is a great boy. This is a good boy. He's just stoked to be here and stoked yeah. to be on, on, on Twitter right now. Uh, anyway, his name is uh, his name is uh, Alan. So everybody say hi to Alan. All right, now we'll talk to you people. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you left a comment over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, let's see here. What do we got from last week's Wolf Den? podcast we have that was when we had aj on and we were talking a lot about yes. pokemon we had seven who says the chibi style for the gen 4 remakes is growing on me but the ds era sprites will always have a special place in my heart uh yeah i don't know i mean i think it looks good yeah it looks I, fine to me um i mean i like both art styles of of the of the new games I think they I think they they both work. Yeah. Parker says I'm excited for the Diamond and Pearl remakes. I think the art style is fine and it will probably grow on me as it go as time goes on. I think Pokémon Snap will sell great. It's just not worth $60 for the content in this game. This game realistically be around $30, but the Switch tax is what gives it that price. Keep up the great work, guys. I think it's the Switch tax and also the Nintendo tax and also the Pokemon tax. Yeah, there was a lot of taxes on on that. But also, the game's not out yet. We don't know how deep this. We we're just assuming that Pokemon Snap is not going to have a lot of content in it. Yeah. Uh, Greedson says the only thing that bothers me about the new Pokemon Snap game. Oh, I forgot how much I trashed on Pokemon Snap. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that they could have went with an open world style game for photography where not only do you have items to make Pokemon react to different in different ways for different photos, but also give the players different lenses and stuff to be allowed to make even better pictures of Pokemon however they uh, they please to do so. Instead, it 
just the same game with a slap of new paint on it says greedson and you know what i completely agree i haven't thought about that like i mean i keep saying that it's like the same game for the n64 just put on the switch right or like a sequel to that but like as if it were on an n64 game we see such great photo modes and stuff like the last of us or freaking uh uh spider-man batman yeah. uh yeah, every game now has that a photo That PS4 mode. Samurai game, I'm drawing a blank for some reason. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima has a beautiful yeah. photo mode. Why not go hard on the photo aspect of the game? Instead, you're just key, you're just limiting the functionality of the game, it feels like. I don't know, because Pokemon Snap is a very specific thing. You know, it's not just a photo mode. It's a It's a very specific game. And I don't necessarily think making it open world is the answer we're looking for here because, you know, it's an it's a rail shooter Pokemon Snap. I'm not I mean, that's that's what people remember. I'm not asking for 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 I'm not asking for open world. But I would like to see more in the photo aspect. I think that there's right. no excuse for that. Like don't act like the original pokemon snap had such depth and like groundbreaking mechanics you know like i used to take those pictures in pokemon snap and then go to friggin uh blockbuster be like oh look at these pictures that i took let me put them on my binder like imagine <laughs> a kid today going hard on taking pictures in the new pokemon yeah. snap and like screenshotting them and putting them on facebook and whatnot like it would be cool to see like people playing around with depth of field, people playing around with like uh, I don't know, I don't know about different lenses, but you know stuff like what people do in freaking The Last of Us, which is a freaking yeah. uh, a a borderline slapped on photo mode, you know. <laughs> but I but the thing about Pokemon Snap is the whole gameplay is the discovery of Pokemon in the wild, and instead of capturing them you take their picture it's basically like animal photography those photo modes in the other game is to pause what you're doing the action that you are currently doing and set up this elaborate beautiful frame it removes the sensation of you know finding something in the wild to take a picture of in that immediate moment i don't think it needs to take away from from the excitement of finding the thing i think it just give us more in the way of take it also add to the longevity of the game you'll have so much more yeah. to do after you beat the game like actually taking the pit like i understand that you don't want to pause the game set the scene like you kind of do in the last of us and whatnot but yeah give us a lot of options for snapping the photo you know right. for making the photo look really cool anyway uh mako fox 22 the lore is what is scary about uh F five nights at freddy's also fnaf versus vr also fnaf vr is very terrifying i don't think the lore of five nights at freddy's is terrifying because it's nonsense it's complete nonsense the lore of five nights at freddy's is one of those it's one of those like types of lores that's needlessly deep and complex Th that's like it it's, it doesn't need to be any more than you're a security guard trapped in Chuck E. Cheese and, oh, the animatronics may be alive. It's it's deep and complex. Not... Uh, so people think that the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's is some, like, mad genius that, like, made this huge, deep lore, like, on purpose. Yeah. I think that it's just random shit. And then the fans and freaking game theory put it all together for yeah. him. And he's like, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I think it's, I, I mean, I'm not that well versed in the fun. That's a phrase lore. I played the first game for two seconds with you, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not buying it. I'm not, I'm not here for it. Uh, and the last thing, AW it's Wednesday, my dudes. No, it's Tuesday. Oh, well, on, I guess, I guess when we post it on YouTube, it's Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Now we're in the chat for a little bit. Yeah. Make it good, people. Make it good. Kiriakos is Pokemon Go, dot, dot, dot. People put a lot of people, people, 
people like to talk about Pokemon Go as an AR game, but I never had the AR on when I played that game. I used to, but then like I turned it off because it would drain battery life, and it ran better if you turned the AR and off. And it was easier to capture Pokemon and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was cool the first time when I, I saw a Charmander on my knee. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. They did add uh, a photo mode into that game where you can like move the pokemon around and take pictures of them doing stuff which is cool because then you can have the pokemon like in your world (laughs) god bless you thank you uh where was i see torta will what did you think of wandavision i liked it i liked the way it ended i thought it was satisfying um could it have could they have done more with it? Yes. Um, but I think it does set up an interesting direction for those characters and uh, especially Wanda heading into Doctor Strange 2. Uh, I was not disappointed that Reed Richards didn't show up or that freaking one of the characters didn't wind up being Mephisto or whatnot. <laughs> um, stop going into things thinking they're going to confirm your fan theory because most of the time they're not. I am uh, i haven't seen it at all. How many episodes is it? Nine. That's not bad. It's very, it flies by, especially the first few episodes because they're like half an hour. Oh. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Yeah. Stick with it because like it doesn't start making sense until episode four. <laughs> great that's why i'm like that's why i don't want to watch it you know the core concept of it right yeah no i get it yeah yeah so you you should you should be fine orange fruit says bro if you look at the cost difference between physical and and download for indie titles dead cells hollow knight katamari damasi reroll the physical cartridges cost weirdly large amounts of money to make uh i don't know exactly how much it costs to make a cartridge i didn't think it costed that much i i mean imagine it would cost you know a substantial i mean i don't know what it is offhand but i know like nintendo 64 cartridges used to be ten dollars a cartridge for the developer that's a pretty substantial i'd, I'd imagine yeah. that the bigger the developer the the less it costs yeah because they get like a, also, they get like, a lot more of them that's why you know playstation was so successful back then because it was like two dollars a disc compared mm-hmm. to ten dollars a cartridge so that's why moving to cd roms is probably the way to go yeah i mean i get why they switched back to cartridge for the switch but i don't know like how much it costs for that i'd imagine it shouldn't cost that much compared to what cartridges cost uh but that's part of the switch tax i guess Mm-hmm. Also, it should be noted that Nintendo gives like developers less keys for downloads because, like, yeah, d- friggin', you think like a digital download is just is just free, right? Like, it's just a code. Like, why can't you just give those away? Why don't you just have a million of them? Um, but Nintendo only a lot. Every company, every platform allots you just a certain amount of uh of keys or downloads to yeah. like give away for free. And Nintendo gives you the least amount out of all the digital platforms. Yeah. For some stupid reason. I don't really know how it works. Like, like, uh, yeah, you can't just generate codes for your game, which is kind yeah. of lame because it's your game and it's, it, it should cost you money to give somebody your, a key to the game that you made. You know what I mean? Like you don't have yeah. a stock of it. Oh, beat em ups just raided us. Oh my god. Uh, that's so many bricks. Why'd you make your podcast the same day as my podcast? <laughs> We're on the 21st episode. What are you doing? I haven't even had you on yet. Now I can <laughs> never have you on. Unless we do a dual podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for the raid, Wood. I appreciate it. Just do a crossover. Yeah, we'll have to just yeah. freaking uh We'll just have both podcasts be exactly the same content. <laughs> um, me and Wood have been playing Minecraft. I got sucked into Minecraft, Will. I, I can see that. You've been doing it like 
every other month it's like minecraft this minecraft that not every other month it it feels like you took a break i never played minecraft previously to uh to, didn't that, that's not didn't true. you that's not true you played you played minecraft like a lot like not a lot but like a substantial amount last year with two, Dan and two, them. two and, years ago i played minecraft for the first time outside of the mobile game <laughs> And that was on Switch, and I played like yeah. maybe like four hours of it. Um, but now I'm really now I'm deep in Minecraft because it's a lot right. different when you're playing with like sixteen people. Yeah. Uh. So uh, yeah, I built a little coffee shop in in our little. We have like a little role playing Minecraft server. It's weird. <laughs> like I yeah I I don't like streaming for that long, you know, and uh, somehow. I'll I'll stream like a normal amount and then I'll log on to Minecraft to see who's on and then all of a sudden I'm in the nether and I'm stuck here and I can't get out it's two hours later and I gotta go to bed. Yeah. It's uh it's it's scary. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. But come on down to Bob's Big Bean. Have yourself a little <laughs> uh a little latte. Now I gotta scroll all the way back. Chris BX says, "Man, yeah. the Pokemon Company has quite the s spectrum for how they want their creations treated. Take pictures of them in their natural habitat, capture them in Pokeballs, and play with them, or have them beat the shit out of each other and <laughs> enslave them." Yeah, I'm, this is why I'm super stoked for the new Pokemon game, Legend of Ar 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 Articuno. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> close enough. I like the idea of that because it's so different than uh, what we've been having for Pokemon recently. Yeah, like I'm so down for for a different spin on that. Cmy Tyke says, uh, "I'm deep into Smash Brothers, but what do you guys think about Pyra being a new Smash Brothers character?" I was thinking about making that a news story, but there's not much to talk about. Uh, Did you? Is, is she out yet? She's out, and she's great. Yeah. I really like her. I might put her in the rotation. I don't play many characters. I play Captain Falcon. Yeah, I was going to say, you you always used to be just Captain Falcon, and now it sounds like you're adding more characters to your rotation. So I'm almost almost always Captain Falcon. Uh, yeah. I like Byleth a lot. I will, th right. I will throw in Byleth every once in a while. Um, I try with Roy, but he's just not. He's just too similar to Captain Falcon, and it's it doesn't cut it for like a like Roy's fun, but it, he doesn't cut it for a, a like a counter pick. Like if Captain Falcon is not working right. out, I can't count on Roy, but sometimes I can count on Byleth or Ganon. So okay, so I forgot about Ganon. So I got Captain Falcon, I got Ganon, and I got maybe Roy if I'm feeling like it. Then mm -hmm. Byleth works out if I need some range, and. Uh, now Pyra and Mithra is just a good pick. She's just all around, just all around good. Like Py so you yeah. can switch between Pyra and Mithra. Pyra, I think, is the strong one, and she's a little slower. And Mithra is really fast and not as strong, but their moves are relatively the same, so it's kind of yeah. easy to switch back and forth between the two. Um, you just hit down and B, and you switch between both of them on the fly. Um, and it's freaking great. Uh, she's got a lot of really cool things that she can do. Uh, I mean, uh, Pyra just deletes people. We Our stream keeps crashing. This is like the fourth yeah. time it's crashed. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it does this. Um, but yeah, uh, friggin' Pyra has some moves that just absolutely annihilate people at like really low percents. Uh, it's, they do no shield damage though, like almost no shield damage. So if somebody's shielding, like with Ganon, if somebody's shielding, you can you can keep charging that move and then destroy their shield. Yeah. Uh, Pyra can't do that. She's really strong, but can't break a can't break a shield. Right. But no, I think that they're a, they would be a good option in my rotation if I can't make things work with Captain Falcon. Uh, basically, Pyra is Ganon and Mithra is Captain Falcon. She is really. Uh, wait, is that backwards? I think that's backwards. the 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 fast one is probably as fast as Captain Falcon, but it has some moves where she just freaking teleports across the stage, freaking crazy. Right. Um. 
she's she's a lot of fun though it's 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 a good even though people are mad that it's a new sword fighter she is a great character i right. i i i recommend giving her a try pyra strong mithra fast that's isn't that backwards oh i'm dumb mithra is the fast one yeah i had it all backwards you get the you get what i'm saying uh anyway yeah i don't know why my stream kept why the stream keeps crashing i'm sorry but it's just i have a this always happens to me it's freaking my connection to twitch is see, like again our connection in discord doesn't drop at all i can see will have to yeah. and everything he can no. see me yeah but for whatever reason twitch just hates me Marimba Pirates is speaking of Minecraft. My mommy is currently streaming Minecraft. This is her first stream <laughs> as an affiliate. What? Is it actually Damn. your mom? Is it actually your mom? I don't know why I just Googled that name and expected it to come up. <laughs> I think that might actually be his mom. Uh, favorite song right now says Har Car. Yeah. What is your favorite song? Is the question. Uh, <laughs> well, right now he's asking specifically. Right now, like right, right this second. Uh, right now I'm re I've been a big fan of this YouTube channel Two Minutes to Late Night, and they recently did a cover of Pantera's Mouth for War, which was excellent hmm. i highly recommend you check that out and watch it it's so good it made my daughter dance <laughs> i am a i uh, mine is dare from the uh transformers soundtrack from the <laughs> 80s movie it's uh, one of the best songs of all time but yep. you have to watch it in the movie you can't yeah. just listen to the song yeah um I will right, take like uh, one or two more here and then we will get out of here. Kiriako says I just pictured my uncle streaming Mario Brothers on NES and that would be cool. Wish more of the older generations would play games. Uh our father used to play games and then we uh we we uh ruined it for him. Allegedly. So he played Tetris on the Game Boy. All the time. Yeah. I think he bought that for himself. Yeah. Um He it, it's debatable that he bought the NES for himself. We don't really know. Yeah. But uh then he for the end we got an N sixty four and then he bought himself a Rogue Squadron. And he played it, and I guess we were there and backseat gaming him way too hard and he rage quit yeah. and never played a game again. He claims we were making fun of him. I maintain that we were trying to teach him how to play the game. No, we were definitely making fun of him. We might have, but I feel like it was more about trying to tell him how to go straight and what to shoot. Our father does not like to uh, be bad at things. Yeah. Like I, I was explaining before, you have to be bad at things before you can get good at it. If you want to try new things, you have to not be afraid to be bad. Our father does not like to be bad at something <laughs> like when we go to vegas his favorite place on earth it's his favorite yeah. place he does not like to gamble well he, he likes to gamble at slots he does not like to go to the other things because he's afraid of being bad at it <laughs> he, he sat down at the blackjack table with us for two seconds hit he did one hand got real hit a really big i think he got blackjack immediately and he yeah. went cool and then immediately left the table yeah um lol my girl's mom would take her brother's game boy away and play tetris when they were kids <laughs> yeah i plan on doing that when my girl's old enough <laughs> uh also please release a bob's big bean coffee recipe you want a drink maybe i'll make you maybe i'll make a i'll make like a like a fancy recipe for something for to promote a, a minecraft stream that'd be cute there you go um 
All right, I'm done, but stick around for the raid. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. There you go. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wolfdenpodcast. So go there and watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolfdenpodcast and your preferred podcast service of choice no matter where you experience the wolf den podcast though please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms um go to uh youtube.com slash wolf den clips for some clips videos of some of these streams um they are funny it is a good time uh also i will have a video up on thursday it, it's what it's one of those videos that took a lot of time <laughs> very passionate about it it's either gonna do really good or very very bad so look out for that also um somebody in the chat just said am i gonna be uploading any videos to the personal channel i have one video that is actually coming out pretty soon uh maybe go. next week and it is a coffee video or it has it's coffee related um anyway um i am going to raid she knives because she, we were talking about minecraft and i think she's in our server it looks like she is so All everybody right. goes to how to she knives she basically sherpas me through through uh through our minecraft server uh yes she is definitely in the server right now so okay, go say hi to she knives all right and then you can go do whatever you want okay have a good night, everybody. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.